Okay, as usual, I'm on a tight schedule because I'll be at, uh, at 3 30 p.m. Probably the kids will break in. So, uh, whenever we are ready, let's go. Alessio, you should invest in some sandbags so you can barricade yourself uh, to avoid your kin. I, I really should, but the, this is their home, and actually, I think the grandparents will kill me because these are the, the in laws, so not my mother, so <laughs> cannot, cannot, uh, cannot kid, to, cannot stretch the stretch, it, stretch their patience too much, much. Hello and welcome to The Last Standee, a board game podcast coming to you from five exciting countries across Europe. I am joined here today by Alexis. Hi, that's me. Alessio. Hello. Audrey. Hey, hey. From a desert with no water, David. (laughs) Hey, hey. (laughs) And I am your host, Fen. We're going to be talking about a range of different topics across the hobby and we'll start as we always do with the Standee catch-up. So, uh, David, as soon as I speak, if that's the right term, do you want to tell us how things are going with you? Uh, So basically what happened last night, uh, the main water pipe here broke down and flooded the uh, street in front of our building. So I'm without water right now, which is amazing if you drink like tap water all the time. (laughs) It's annoying, but hopefully they will fix it by tonight. Just wow. (laughs) Now, so hopefully none of the other... um... Uh, facilities get utilities get knocked out yeah it's the second time now like one or two years ago that the same thing happened at the exactly same spot and uh, i just hope that uh, my intel keep up and won't get shut down in the meanwhile so if i drop out of the this recording you know what's going on <laughs> yeah a tidal wave has come in and pushed you away i hereby suggest to have a column in the last andy catch up which is keep up with david <laughs> it's always yeah your life is amazing um, yeah i'm not sure if a- a- amazing is the right word may you live in interesting <laughs> times is indeed a curse you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, it only can get better from here on <laughs> mm. well uh in which case alexis how have you been i've been mostly well uh continuing my uh job. better from here on <laughs> mm. Well, uh, in which case, Alexis, how have you been? I've been mostly well, uh, continuing my uh, job search at the moment. I went to see my parents recently and we played a bit of uh, Time Stories, which I'm not going to talk into detail in one of our episodes, but I think it's it's nice to mention that the game has some ni- good to my parents recently and we played a bit of uh, Time Stories, which... I'm not going to talk into detail in one of our episodes, but I think it's it's nice to mention that the game has some ni- good mechanics, but a big problem with uh, its themes and setting. Uh, the core box specifically is the game has some ni- good mechanics, but a big problem with uh, its themes and setting. Uh, the core box specifically is played in a 1920 asylum and they do it in a in a very um, uncritical and ins- and borderline insensitive way with absolutely no um, regard towards anything. But um, there's some some good mechanics so uh, maybe if uh, maybe if there's later a, a core box that is released with a um, a more interest is something more interesting and maybe a little bit more uh work investigating trying to figure out the correct puzzle yeah it's yeah. kind of like a if a point and click game was turned into a board game it's very uh cooperative and meant to be sort of role played mm-hmm. um but but the characters that you play in, uh, in the core box at the very least are like someone that is for their paranoia someone that has been interned for their erotomani which you would wish that the writers had spent a little bit more time thinking about what they were writing hmm. it reminds me a little bit of chrononauts um yeah which uh, is a lot it's had a lot of praise for its writing but is a lot it's had a lot of praise for its writing but less praise for its mechanics um so where it just sounds a little bit like maybe the other way around here, where it's yes, like the writing's sure. letting it down. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Audrey? Yes, what's me? 
<laughs> yeah, uh, what's happened? Yeah, quite a few things. Yeah, uh, what's happened? Yeah, quite a few things uh, happened lately. Uh, my parents visited for the... Is it Pentecost in English? Uh, don't know, but Pentecostal is an adjective. So I guess so. For the yeah. we weekend of uh, uh, Whit Pentecost? It's Whitson. Um, in... Whitson? Yeah. Okay, so they came for the weekend of, uh, they visited for the weekend of Whitson, and uh, they brought a few games that I advised them to buy, so we played Coatl, uh, Quirkle, which were their games, and they definitely had the rules wrong, so I corrected them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also made them try some of our games, which were uh, Chakra. And Forbidden Island, because I wanted to show them a co-op game. And they asked for a second game of uh, uh, Forbidden Island after we, of course, lost the first one, even in easy mode. Uh, but we won the second... easy mode. Uh, but we won the second game, so they, they were really happy. Uh, and I gifted them a Codex Naturalis for uh, Mother's and Father's Day in advance. Um, so that's for the family part, and uh, for just my boyfriend and I, we this for the family part, and uh, for just my boyfriend and I, we decided to stop our tainted grade campaign uh, because we found out that the last four chapters are uninteresting. We we don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> we think that uh, uninteresting. We, we don't like them. <laughs> we think that uh, the mechanics become a bit boring and it's just like, yeah, go to the same places to find something different or in the hopes of finding something different. And we didn't feel that there was much of the lore pain uh, over the last third. Mm. So we, we just decided to stop. And uh, following that, we opened the Pandemic Legacy Season Zero box and we started and so far we have uh, five months played and overall I'd say we are doing average, oh, that's okay, we, we are not getting uh, swarmed or stuff like that. But uh, honestly, the, the game is, I, I think it's really a good game. And yes, I destroy the cards because that's how it's meant to be. And I said for once, I'm going to play a legacy game, how it's supposed to be played. <laughs> yeah, I really uh, Legacy Season Zero. I think it's the one where they everything works. The theme fits the uh, with the mechanics and it's just enjoyable and well put yeah, together. Yeah, and the box... And the box is big enough for my cat now that he's one year old. <laughs> that's that's always important, yeah. yeah. Yes. I gotta say it, it's really enough for my cat now that he's one year old. <laughs> that's that's always important, yeah. yeah. Yes. I gotta say it, it's really nice to hear um, your parents like embracing this journey down with board gaming. That's um, something I wish my parents would do. Uh, yeah, well, I will talk uh, again about that in one of our subjects. <laughs> uh, again, that uh, subjects. Uh, again, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy that I get to showcase games for them. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, nice way to socialize. I find with the, with the family, um, you know, it gives you a f activity to focus on. Maybe in those times where otherwise people would sit around or maybe pick up their phones or something. It's uh... It... Everything went fine. But before that, my mom had the screen moving or everything, so she couldn't play really well. But now, everything is fine, so we need to schedule another game. Sounds sounds fun. Um, and Alessio, how have things been with you? Oh, mostly fine. I, I would... Uh, uh, in my head, uh, I the sun on Board Game Arena because I managed to win a couple of games in a row. So this is, wow, kudos to me, hooray. But actually, the, the, the thing that made the news for me is that uh, there's actually at uh, Hasbro's account for uh, HeroQuest Reprint, uh, Hasbro's account for uh, HeroQuest Reprint, uh, it seems that uh, Zargon has taken over. So if you go check Twitter on at HeroQuest account, you, you will find tweets from the perspective of Zargon or Morkar, a aka the titular villain of the HeroQuest series. Uh, Zargon or Morkar, aka the titular villain of the HeroQuest series. Uh, yeah. they, they are kind of juvenile in a bit, but they are fun. fun to, uh, and they answered us. 
uh, actually <laughs> we we mentioned the uh, hero quest and we got an answer with the less than the twitter account uh, actually <laughs> we we mentioned the uh, hero quest and we got an answer with the less than the twitter account yeah it's it's been fun for those people who are uh, uh, i'm sure everyone should be familiar with hero quest but um more um Mordka, um, a, what, what was it again? Um, Zarg- Zargoth? Zargoth? Oh, Zargoth. <laughs> yeah, Zargoth's the American name for him. Um, is uh, the He's a wizard dressed up all in red who sits on the GM screen. Like, very iconic. Um, I remember one of my friends back in the UK, he treasures his copy of Hero Quest. He's like quite a bit older than me. Um, and he pulled it out for us. Nostalgia so much that I went, I'm going to get this redone version when it comes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun seeing him engage all in caps and uh, uh, and add that nice mix of self-deprecating as well as arrogant. It's 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 interesting because he wasn't really much of an entity in the game, from what I understood. He was just on the GM screen. Yeah, you you, ne- you never met him actually. Yeah. There was the sorcerer lord or witch lord or something like that. Yeah, there, there's there was a witch lord, but he he was like undead or something, like a lich, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but... kind of a leech or a necromancer. Mm. It it uh, posed as a standee for uh, a necromancer on the second edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I think, mm. or first maybe, uh, the one with the uh, scale which is a bit off. Oh, I have no idea. Yes, uh, really first, for, for, first or second edition. Yeah, that's outside of my remit of knowledge. I don't, I don't know. I need the Rogue Trader trader book though for forty k. With the Crimson Fists, is it, on the cover? Uh, Crimson Fists on the cover of Rock Trader? Mm, I think so. Ah, uh, don't, 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 don't remember. Actually, I never played Rock Trader. Me, me either, but I've seen like copies of that book. I just haven't seen the fantasy stuff. Trader. Me, me either, but I've seen like copies of that book. I just haven't seen the fantasy stuff. Uh, but yeah, okay. And then, uh, as for me, uh, we got Woodpeckers. That's yeah, been, that's been that, that just literally just today the f- first fledgling um, went outside and it was an absolute disaster. Just today the f- first fledgling um, went outside and it was an absolute disaster. So, <laughs> um, for, for, we got a tree in the garden that's ha- always had this hole in it as we moved here, and we thought that they'd been man-made because the tree's been bolted to support it. So we thought it was drilled for access. It's, it's a woodpecker nest, which is nuts because this thing's like a meter off the ground. It's like terrible safety, but I guess the, the woodpeckers felt that it was um, safe enough to, to ha- use um, in previous years because they'll always come back to the same nest. So I have to put up with this again next spring, probably. It's like a, a cacophony of tidy baby bird noises coming from the garden a few weeks ago. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Eventually we saw... Uh, two woodpeckers going in and out of the hole and I was like okay well we got a woodpecker nest so I had to fence off that tree um, to keep our dog Pam away from it because um, birds off the lawn she has a long standing rivalry with um, Bessie the big crow we have a really (laughs) big hooded crow like an absolutely massive one that um, that lives around here um, and fights with everything else in the garden the starlings hate her but anyway uh, today I'm working in my office on the other side this strange bark from pam in the garden it's not like any of her usual barks she has one bark for oh my god there's someone walking past the house she has a different one for hey you get off our porch and a different one entirely for i know you i like you come here come here i'm going to shout at you but this one was just like an odd bark so i thought oh i better go out and check what's going on because we're near fledgling there and uh, sure enough she's run straight into the um, fencing i've put up and crashed it against the tree Ooh. And I'm like, yes, I'm like, oh, God, what's going on here? Then a fledgling must have come out. And I look and I look down and trapped between the trunk of the tree and the fence, like a wing sprayed out fledgling woodpecker. Yeah. I know I'm like, oh, God, no. So I immediately tell her off and I tell her off and make her go inside. And she's like really like apologetic and sad about it. Um, tail between her legs. And I go back out and... It still hasn't moved, so I, I lift the fence away, and it starts. Well, thank goodness, because the actual fence itself has been bent around the tree, so she hit the fence into the tree higher up than where the bird was located, and 
it, it, um, it didn't break its wings, which is incredible because it's a bird. They're very fragile. Um, yeah, thank God. Though. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I pulled the fence away, kind of climbing up the tree. And then jumped out of the tree and floated a bit down and landed on the lawn a distance away from me. And I was like, I, <laughs> you can't be out on the lawn. Like, there's, there's a crow. The, cr- the crow will eat you. So I have to go over and like shepherd it back towards the tree and then it panicked and the fence gaps are just too small for the bird to get through. So I have to pick it up, which is, you know, I've I, I've never met a woodpecker before in my life before we had these in the garden. So I picked up a woodpecker today and popped it back on the tree. It was actually a, clearly a very scared and didn't know exactly what was going on. So it, uh, it didn't fuss off the back onto the tree trunk. And then I took the fence down. Because if it can't fit through the gaps in the fence, it's going to be flying away from the tree again. It needs to be able to get back to the nest for uh, a, a, until it's strong enough to fly on its own. So the fence is down and now Pam's banned from the garden. Um, and that first fledgling has climbed up to the top of the tree and is now hanging. So it's pretty safe, <laughs> I think. And the second one is poking its head out and looking around and still calling. It's a bit confused where its parents are and where um, its uh, sibling is. So we don't know exactly how many we're going to have to deal with. Uh, typically, this is a greater spotted woodpecker. They're the ones with the um, they're black and white. They have a red um, like butt area, um, belly, I should say. And the fledglings have a red head. Um, they usually lay a clutch of four to six eggs. So we're going to have to see if how many of those have hatched but yeah that's been um that's been most of this morning dealing with with all of that stuff and now i just have to hope that the crow doesn't get it you don't want to have to deal with that um not, not interested in having um woodpeckers dying in the garden because well we need more woodpeckers on the island they're not they're not enough of them so we have to protect the nesting site yeah absolutely oh well i don't want to be the yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I don't want to be the the party pooper here, but I think we have to talk about more games now. Oh, we do. We do. <laughs> We're going to start with um, a, a rather big, broad thing. We're doing one of our lists, STEM lists, but more specifically, it's um, Board Game Geek's list. We're going to be looking at the golden thing. We're doing one of our lists, STEM lists, but more specifically, it's um, Board Game Geek's list. We're going to be looking at the Golden Geek 2020. Um, Woohoo! Yeah, just the first to third place because the it's been impossible to find the full nomination list. So we're going to be going through. We, you might find us skip past some um, either because they're turning up in a given category or because none of us have played it. Um, but uh, we'll we'll take it from the top of the list. So you can find this on Board Game Geek at the 15th Golden Geek Awards winners if you want to follow along. And um, right, well, who wants to start with the two-player category? Oh, oh, I can since I have the game category for uh, 2020 was uh, was won by Undaunted North Africa, which is uh, a kind of spin-off or sequel to Undaunted Normandy. It uh, basically uh, is a war game in, set in North Africa. Africa. Uh, it puts Italian fascist forces uh, uh, against the against the long range uh, something something uh, fan help me because that's a british uh, that's a british force uh, Ooh, um let me give me a second uh, i i know it's uh, i i know it's it's uh, while i look this up uh, oh, it's the, oh yeah sorry it's the british army's long range desert group which interestingly yeah. my mother's father uh mother's father's father was in he was in the the long range desert group as an engineer um he uh, well what can you say he nearly um he nearly it's a story i'll tell sometime oh so so your grandfather could have killed my grandfather no actually that that didn't happen so (laughs) my grandfather (laughs) made it back safely (laughs) anyway uh like i said it was won uh, by undaunted uh, north africa and it has beaten a matched cog which is i think a standalone expansion for a matched yes i i i have unmatched um buffy and unmatched uh battle of legends volume one and they're right here i played a bit of the unmatched i really like this as a as a two-player game i think it's a fun one to to play along a, a friend is cobble and fog the one with sherlock holmes and the invisible man yes 
Um, yes, it is. Yeah, he hasn't um, come out yet over here. Whoop, I dropped the boxes over. Um, but uh, it's it's really, really good. Like, very enjoyable to play again. So, of that game is that every character is extremely uh, unique. They all play in a very different way. And so the... Um, um, the asymmetric uh, gameplay uh, and the, the way that different characters will play against each other is mainly the, the fun that you're going to experience. So every, so every expansion adds so much to the game. Yeah, which which characters have you played with? Um, I've played as... It's been a while. I played against the Invisible Man. I think I play as Jekyll and Hyde and as Alice, which is the... Alice is in the first game and Jekyll and Ooh. Hyde is in the, the Cobble and... As Alice, which is the... Alice is in the first game and Jekyll and Ooh. Hyde is in the, the Cobble and Fog game. L I think. Alice is OP. Alice is great. She's a great <laughs> character, but she got killed by... Um, I think it's the Sasquatch or the Yeti or some type of... Big feet. Yes. Yeah. Bigfoot uh, that killed her. Uh, yes. Yeah. Bigfoot uh, that killed her. Uh, that killed Alice. But uh, yeah, really fun to play. Yeah, Alice is in the Battle of Legends Volume One, along with Medusa and King Arthur um, and Sinbad. Uh, oh. Who do you? Oh yeah, I also played as Sinbad. Who do you like to play then? Oh, um, I'm I'm all for playing as Spike. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, that's the Buffy expansion, which is uh, uh, actually I think it's good. I also really like the Raptors, but I don't own that unfortunately. Oh, the Jurassic Park one. Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, this is becoming a uh, much uh, the topic. So uh, the runner-up is Imperial Struggle, which is kind of an evolution of the mechanics of Twilight Struggle. It's actually kind. Uh, I didn't play it, so I can't say a lot. But I. I looked at a couple of review by more competent reviewers uh, than me, eh, actually, and uh, I'd say that uh, that uh, it evolved a lot on the mechanics, but is uh, kind of the the, the same-ish card play than Twilight Struggle. Uh, don't if, if if it works, don't fix it. Remember, Twilight Struggle dominated the uh, rankings for a long time for good reason. Yeah, of course. Uh, Twilight Struggle is still one of my favorite one-on-one. I have to say, of the complex favorite one-on-one. Uh, uh, of course, uh, knowing that uh, you have equally skilled uh, opponents, because the skill level uh, he m makes the game fun or boring. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, often a case with a case with um, with those kind of games. And anyway, so it won Undaunted, which in this case is a bit different from... It uses the same card activation mechanic you uh, you had in Normandy, but it's a bit different because the factions are widely asymmetrical. Uh, specifically, the, Ital the Italians have the, ve the vehicles, while the while the English basically have the, I'd say, the movement or the range or the objectives, but it plays a lot asymmetrical. And uh, to cut this short, I, I kind of agree with, uh, with the Golden Geek Award year. I think that on Geek Award year, I think that on Dante North Africa deserves a lot to be the winning two-player game for that year. Yeah, it's not my kind of jam, but um, people have really raved about it. Uh, we're going to skip the artwork presentation section because every single game mentioned on there comes in a diff up in a different category. And then there's the card games, the winner of placement slash card game Dune Imperium, um, which is very good. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it, it was up against proper, pure cr card games within the category. And so uh, it, I don't know. I don't know. For me, I wouldn't have uh, put it in the card game category at all. Yeah, actually, the problem is that that I like the building theme, but it's not a card game. It's a worker placement slash deck builder with a lot of intrigue in the middle. It's an out, it's an awesome game. Actually, I think it's the best of the three mentioned, but uh, it's not a card game, so it shouldn't be there. Well, I mean, you know, the nominations are as they are, so it shouldn't be there. Well, I mean, you know, the nominations are as they are. The system is as it is. Uh, the runner-up we've talked about on this um, podcast before, that's Fort. So we don't need to go into detail there, except to say Fort's great. Yeah. Really great. Uh, and then um, Oceans was the other runner-up, which I'd be... was the other runner-up, which I'd be toying with uh, talking about some points, but I need it's... to play it with more players. 
it's an engine building game, right? It is. Yeah, it's an yeah. Engi- engine building game with um, the theme of being species surviving and um, feeding off each other within uh, the same ecosphere, each other within uh, the same ecosphere. And it's, it's quite vicious at times, which is fun. Um, but as I say, I don't think it makes for a great two-player game, which is why I haven't <laughs> had a chance to fully review it. I've only uh, given it a, a short try, but uh, it seemed to function a lot like uh, Race for the Galaxy. So it has um, it has try, but uh, it seemed to function a lot like uh, Race for the Galaxy. So it has um, it has to really prove itself against Race of the Galaxy to me. Yeah, it has some similarities. Uh, it does feel quite different to me. Um, okay. Yeah. But you're you're kind of instead of building a tableau, you're kind of building mini tableau, building mini tableaus of each particular fish and or, mm. or octopus or whatever or cuttlefish, hopefully because they're amazing, um, and how they uh, how they work and some of them might feed off other people or be an apex top end predator or bottom feeder or whatever. Um, the game has two modes, so it's a little family for unique nuts sort of crazy abilities. It's it's. I think it's quite good, but uh, as I say, you do have to be willing to roll with the punches if somebody starts eating up your species. <laughs> I see. Right then, we got um, cooperative games. Um, it's the winner for the cooperative game. I do think that's actually kind of fair. This is a, I, I really like Jaws of the Lion as a two-player game in particular. Um, not perfect, uh, but. A significant improvement over the original Gloomhaven in many aspects. Oh, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the support healing one is not good in every circumstance. She, you shouldn't really play her until you're at least at three players. Um, and there are some like disturbing undertones of speciesism that, uh, as some people have joked, basically any time you make a decision, uh, pick the one that would you'd consider to be like morally wrong yeah. when they were writing. But I, I, I read a wonderful comment from um, one woman who said when she played with her husband, uh, whenever it's time to make a decision, they sang the racist song <laughs> to help remind <laughs> them that they shouldn't make the decision they thought was morally correct, but make the one that fits within the world. Okay, Frost Heaven is guaranteed to improve on this. Uh, Certainly. Uh, then we have the runner-up. Uh, Audrey already mentioned this, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Very deserved, I feel. Yeah, I- I'm sure I'm playing it now because in French it happened later than everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's... Well, I only got to play it at the start of this year um, as well. So, yeah, a f- fantastic game. And then I play it at the start of this year um, as well. So, yeah, a f- fantastic game and then uh, the third one is it was also in the zoomable category is forgotten waters which i've been playing recently and it is the party game version of sleeping gods that's the <laughs> oh. best way to describe it. it it is it plays up to seven is forgotten waters which i've been playing recently and it is the party game version of sleeping gods <laughs> That's the best oh. way to describe it. it. It is. It plays up to seven players, and it works with that many players. It is fun. It's light. It's enjoyable. The app is brilliant. It is like hilarious. Um, up to seven players, and it works with that many players. It is fun. It's light. It's enjoyable. The app is brilliant. It is like hilarious. Um, we were playing and um, Profi. Uh, what is it? He, he he ran into a battle and the app had him adding and he went, oh, I'll help you. Pulled the sword out and that was the worst thing to do and she bled everywhere and died. And this woman <laughs> with two eye patches then like had a go at him and cursed him. <laughs> now, we thought that was quite funny, but then a while later, that woman with two eye patches comes back and then Profi accidentally kills her as well. <laughs> and so she cursed. And, and the writing is so good. All the stuff out for you. The guy doing the reading is phenomenal. The game, mm, like... Yes, it is one of my games of the year for last year, definitely, even though I only got to play it this year. It's Isaac Vega, that's uh, Dead of Winter. Um, you know, I think anything he does, I'm always going to take a close look at going. Um, expansions? Somebody want to take expansions? Of course. Yeah, I can do expansions, even though I haven't played any other games. <laughs> But uh, I, I, in my opinion, uh, two of them of the list, the winner and one of the runner-up, were just obvious choices. Wingspan is incredibly played. I, I like I like the Oceana expansion because it's the cockatiels. 
it w- it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a, a golden geek award if there wasn't uh, wingspan as a winner uh, somehow <laughs> yeah the, get your golden geek bingo out wingspan yeah. or expansion gloomhaven boom 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 yeah root yes root yes. <laughs> which is the next one with the underworld expansion that's a really yeah. good expansion yeah actually i think that uh, both the runner ups were better than the winner then there is the other runner-up, which is Jagged Earth for Spirit Island, which I, I should play it some. Then there is the other runner-up, which is Jagged Earth for Spirit Island, which I, I should play it someday. Yeah. Uh, I should find it someday first. I think at some point we, we're going to have to sit down and talk about Spirit Island because everything it does is absolutely um, phenomenal. I recently read on a private Discord, phenomenal. I recently read on a private Discord a piece from somebody who lives in an island nation that's been like um, I- exploited and dealt with colonialism and everything. And he said that Spirit Island was the first time, um, I say he actually, they, I don't know the gender, they, um, uh, they felt that this was the first time a game, because there's obviously a lot of very clever things in that game. So uh, uh, thumbs up for Spirit Island for me at least. Yeah, that, that's the king. That's the king of cooperative games for me. So anything that comes out for Speed Island, if it's that, if it's even half fast, if uh, it's the expansion, Jack Darth, they outdone the, themselves. It adds a lot to the game and improves on every mechanic. Uh, the, the only problem is probably that uh, you have to have played everything else because uh, it gets complexity over complexity and the rulebook isn't that good that good and there are a lot of contradiction and errata rat and fixes so and clarifications so it's a bit difficult to pick up to start with you have to, to have 20 20 plays under under your belt before you can say you are playing correctly jagged art i think 20 20 plays of uh, old spirit island and the other expansions of course it is wow. definitely a game you need to play and replay and replay um it's also i think at its best played at least two player because a lot of the spirits are very much about comboing with each other and it can be overwhelming to try and control multiple spirits single-handed even though you, you you can have everything laid out on the table it's a lot to take in and plan i definitely will need to give it a try then yeah there's um there's an app on steam um i actually really like it it's had some mixed reviews but i i, I find that the best way of solo playing um the game it just handles everything really well i i'm a little light though so i sit there with my um tablet and I copy it with physically with the board because it just helps me <laughs> helps me slow down my thinking and make good decisions. It's also great because the app tells you you can like future see where everything's gonna spread to, which helps a lot, you know. Yes. Um, right, when we category David, would you like to tell us about some innovative stuff? Is he flooded away? Uh... He has! Oh my god! Oh. I oh, he literally there he is. Hey, hey, David. Hey, like my connection cut off for it. I, literally uh, cut uh, out right as I was saying. Would you like to tell us about the innovative games? Oh no, he just doesn't want to. He's gone again. I will. Okay. I will. Uh, definitely Alexis, would you, you like to tell songs. us about the innovative games? Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, I was actually going to do the light uh, game of the year. Oh, okay, uh, sure. Cutting. Sure. Uh, I was actually going to do the light uh, game of the year. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Category. Sure. Sure. Then, Audrey, could you would you like to continue with the innovative category? Yes, I can continue with the innovative category. And the first, the winner <laughs> is a game that my sister bought, and I gave her some unlock boxes, and she has to trade it. Winner <laughs> is a game that my sister bought, and I gave her some unlock boxes, and she has to trade it uh, for me. So I can't wait to get my hands on her uh, box of Micro Macro Crime City. Uh, I don't know uh, about you, but I am part mostly of French board game uh, communities because, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's easier to ask uh, when you have uh, questions about rules and stuff when the names of the rules are the same. Uh, it was a big hit in the French uh, community, really huge. Uh, so I don't really know outside uh, of the French community, but uh, yeah, during the autumn, it was just everything you could hear about and uh, how it was out of stock in every single store. So 
yeah, that it was obvious that it would win innovative category. Yeah, I heard that it's really good. I could not get my hands on this except um, fully in Swedish, and my Swedish comprehension isn't good enough yet. So, um, I, I I like this as in I I like this as in um, I'm not going to take too long, but I really enjoy these detective style of games, which all sort of descend from Sherlock Holmes consulting detective. Um, I like how micro macro is taking this format and making it visual, which allows for um, people who maybe have trouble with uh, and also younger people to engage with it although having said that there's a couple of cases in micro macro that are not exactly child friendly um so i i also know uh, from what i've heard uh, is that when you are played uh, or you are playing or you are making kids play and it's very hard on uh, as well, if you have uh, there is a magnifier in the box, I think, and it's one magnifier, so yeah, you have to handle the amount of people playing. So yeah, there, there's a bit of optimization to do there, and especially with kids to avoid them fighting about the magnifier. Uh, maybe like clubs with younger children and families with with children as well. Um, uh, so. And you, you can teach children to share the magnifier, which is good as well. Hmm. Yeah. You can have a box full of spare magnifiers and make them all share one to learn sharing. <laughs> they're sharing. They can they share one to learn sharing. <laughs> they're sharing. They can they get another one. Uh, what was the next game? Uh, the Search for Planet X, and I've heard that it's uh, great to play, and I've also been looking forward to to give it a try. Yeah, I've heard good things about this. I've heard interestingly. Um, you can find Planet X and good things about this. I've heard, interestingly, um, you can find Planet X and not be the winner with the way the game works, which is which is pretty cool. That yeah. um, it, It's quite innovative and quite complex. Uh, I think it's another app-based game, which is the only real downside as such. But it's you... the only real downside as such. But still, you really love your uh, physical boards, don't, I, don't I, you? I do. Right. <laughs> but hey, I just praised Forgotten Waters. Go on. I, yeah. I forgot something. There is a sequel to Micro Macro Crime City coming in a few months. Oh, Hooray. really? Yeah, it's That's... in a few months. Oh, Hooray. really? Yeah, it's That's Micro great. Macro, and I don't remember what comes after, but it's not Crime City. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need the two, actually. It's research art sources. Yeah, but there is there is something there is a sequel coming up. Micro macro something. Uh, yeah, it's not crap. Oh, okay. Anyway, Let me just find it. Google and... um, Full House. No, it's Micro Macro Crime City Full House. Sorry, that's the full title. Yep, there it is. It's got a little murdered um, sheep on the cover. Ooh. I definitely. Yeah, no, it's another standalone game. Yeah, yeah tra but, but, Trails. Yeah. Sequel ish. It's like Trails, uh, how it's called? Yeah. Well, um, then, uh, well, Planet X isn't one <laughs> Sorry. We've, we've played. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we begin doing this as uh, he's uh, been our resident reigning champion on a hot winning streak. Wow, with a yeah. two winning streak, yeah. I know, <laughs> uh, yeah, 100% of games won in the last two games. I mean, Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, Micro Macro also wins like game of the year, uh, but then we got two runner-ups. Yeah, we got Project L, which is a polyomino placement game, which is actually a... Ca uh, uh, I have it, uh, actually. Yeah. Oh, tell us all uh, about it, because I like this. So yes, talk about uh, it. it. It is a great game, and what I really like about it is that you can really play with as many players as you want. Uh, it's It w works really nicely as a solo game with two players. It has uh, some really fun tactics that, that you can play, and with uh, I, I played up to five players, and it stayed interesting uh, all the way up. So I want to eat you... these pieces. This is <laughs> yes, such an the... edible-looking board game. The, the game looked extremely uh, pure and, and simple. You have those tetraminos and little uh, spaces with indents that you, you need to, to put them down. And the way that it functions is that you have to pick uh, boards with like a puzzle shape, uh, a puzzle shape on them um, and then pick pick uh, shapes to to put them onto that uh, that indentation 
and try to work out how to best uh, assemble a pool of um, of shapes that you can then use to to fulfill as many puzzles as you can uh, during mm. your turn. And the this... idea is that there's an engine build building mechanic to that because during your turn you can do certain actions, and if you fulfill a puzzle at the uh, you get an extra action, so you have to think how to um, uh, chain a few moves together. It's really interesting. I like it a lot. It's um, it, it... Uh, chain a few moves together. It's really interesting. I like it a lot. It's um, it, it is released on the thirtieth of June. Uh, it is you can pre-order it from uh, Rebel in Poland. Yeah, uh, and it is like twenty odd euros plus shipping, about twenty three euros. It's yeah. really odd euros plus shipping, about twenty three euros. It's yeah. really cheap, and what I like about it is that it's extremely portable. It's like a tiny box that mm. is really easy to bring to my parents. It's um, it's easy to to learn and to explain. I think it's a, it's really a uh, you know, there's, there's you know there's there's a reason why it's a contender for the game of the year. Now, I'm um, I'm gonna pick up a copy of this. I've already put it in the basket. I'll sort that out after the podcast. Yeah, and I was uh, um yeah, I was eyeing up uh, Santa Monica too because it's a game where you need to create the best boardwalk. I um, reviewed this written for the um, oh for the uh, yeah it's well, on Board Game Geek and also uh, our listeners who are Patreons should have like had notifications about it as well. Uh, it's, it's open brilliant. now, so you can just drop by our Patreon and have a read. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it's 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 edible as heck. I, I... They should rename that category as uh, Edible Game Game of the mm. Year. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, then we got the Medium Games of the Year, um, which has Lost Ruins of Arnak, which we've talked about in the past, Dune Imperium, we just talked about, and Calico, which Audrey talked about previously as well. Yes. Yes. We talked about previously as well. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, and then the heavy game of the year, Jaws of the Lion, of course, is winning again because it got nominated in the category. The runner-up is On Mars, which I have, and it's it also won the um, uh, artwork presentation. Now the um, uh, artwork presentation. Now, personally, I think Kanban EV is prettier than On Mars, but um, I can't argue like with. Uh, on Mars being on the list, and then there's Vice Council of West Kingdom, which I own, and I've still not gotten to the table. I've still not gotten to the table. Mm. Yeah. And then we have the excitingly joyous um, print and play section, which I don't know if anyone has managed to um, to print any of these. Uh, no. Actually, uh, I had a look, but no. actually, uh, I had a look, but didn't play. I printed, but didn't play Seventh Wonders Duel solo, because uh, I I am actually a, a owner of Seven Wonders Duel, and uh, since it's one of the few games that my wife likes, uh, I was curious about it. I, I have this one of the few games that my wife likes. Uh, I was curious about it. I, I have to say, uh, Ticket to Ride, Stay at Home, and Rolling Realms, which are the runner-ups, uh, I can't say anything about them, but Seven Wonders Duel Solo has actually a very smart solo mechanic, a very smart solo mechanic, and it's uh, it, it, kind, it kind of feels a lot like a two-player game, so uh, I have to say it's a good game. Nice. Uh, Rolling Realms um, looks very like self-contained to print. It looks like you could get a make playing cards as it's a card-based game. Um, but uh, I haven't had a chance to do this because I don't have a printer of my own, so it's not really something I can do much of. Although uh, next of all we have the solo game category. The runner-ups were Gloomhaven. Oh, it didn't win, and Lost Ruins of Arnak, which amazingly didn't win either. They were both beaten by a guy's AKA Space Invaders, the board game, which I I have come to realize I just don't like the campaign. Mm-hmm. I like just the random setup, have a go um, s- scenario thing, but I the campaign, I just, I know it's to teach you and introduce you to all the different elements as time passes, but I didn't, didn't like it. 
Oh, that, but I played the print and play, I think last year, because it was uh, very hot, I think it was end of summer, and uh, I was bored and trying to look for something to play. I just printed and played under Falling Skies, and it was kind of cool. It was tense, it was uh, uh, with a difficult with, with a difficulty with you could adjust to your uh, preferences. It was uh, cool. Of course, it's Space yeah. Invaders, so uh, mm -hmm. basically you can't expect to have a complex game, but it makes you pass 20-30 minutes uh, solo, s solo playing uh, without noticing. I think that Railroad Inc. is the other game who made it. Mm. I, I would say uh, it is definitely the best of the three as a solo game, in my opinion. Um, thematic games we'll skip because we've already talked about all of them and the only war game that's new that hasn't appeared elsewhere is the side i know nothing about war games yeah me channel. neither me no neither about this so oh, oh. uh i'm sure it's very good no of I'm course sure. uh, i'd say that undaunted north africa north africa won the the war game section for me even if, if it is a runner-up because uh there's this one good thing about undaunted uh you can play it even if you are not a war game player because the economy of the cards the way you play uh, actually put the the nitpicking the the endless number of stats and the problems which uh, people have, have with war games in general uh, in second in, in second plan so it's actually a good game well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't. We can't, unfortunately don't have time to dwell on it too much. That's why I'm yeah. trying to push through. On the Zoom Ball games, um, I don't. The ca people have complained about the category name, whatever. The games you can play remotely. Uh, Forgotten Waters won. My City uh, got second place, which I think is interesting. It's a good game. Um, and you it's won't hear a me great say that game. About, you won't say, hear me say that about Kinitsia games very often, but it's a good game. Um, and Search for Planet X was the third runner-up. We just talked about it. Um, yeah. I will best, say that best, with, yeah, yeah, with NF Will, I think yeah. that uh, Audrey and I we played we, we played Seven Continents by uh, by camera. It was horrible to play, but we we had a fun time because uh, you know fun time with friends. Yeah, Hard horrible but fun doable. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. We also are having a, a world from our studio, and uh, currently uh, David got swept up by the waters, so we'll have to do the rest of the episode without him, unfortunately. Yeah. If he can um, get a, a boat going, he may be able to <laughs> signal in Morse code occasionally, or, or flag semaphore, or give us yes. a shout. Uh, we uh, will, but uh, we'll... Luckily, he's a former sailor, so he, he, he will yeah. find a way. Luckily, he's a former sailor, so he, he, he will yeah. find a way. Um, on the best podcasts, uh, the... Uh, the last uh, Yeah, <laughs> no, we're, <laughs> we're far uh, too new for that. Too far bad. Too, too chaotic. Next year. Maybe. Uh, so very wrong art games won, and this game is broken, came second. Uh, and the other wrong art games won, and this game is broken, came second. Uh, and the other runner-up was Board Game Barrage. Um, so very wrong art games is it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I oh, concur oh. also because it's the only one of the three I have actually listened to. You've you got to wonder for how long um, he actually listened to. You've you got to wonder for how long um, he they can continue to be so very wrong about games. But, uh, you know, that <laughs> uh, last of all uh, best ball game apps was um, Root. I, I, I got to agree. The Root app is fantastic. The Wingspan app, app which is also really good, and uh, cartography um, like uh, polyno, po polynomial, polynomial, you know, polyominoes. Yeah. Polynomial, Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I I keep kept putting it into my basket to buy each month on my board game budget, and then taking it out at the last minute. Um. I believe it is actually uh from the same role player. Um. Oh. I, 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 it's, I like the look of it. Um, I didn't know there was an app. I might just pick up the app instead. That may be easier now that it's sold out. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Actually, uh, the the Roller Wright games uh, they are always translated. Uh, uh, Roller Wright games uh, they are always translated uh, uh, a lot efficiently in apps. So, Cartographers is a good candidate. Yeah, well, uh, that uh, we've got a little push for time. We talked about this longer than we planned to, but there was a lot of games. As I look at our Golden Geek 
winners and runners up and now plenty but there was a lot of games that's a look at our golden geek winners and runners up and now we're going to go and take a look at a very very good card game that uh, i have described as a card game so straightforward your grandparents could teach it to you um alexis would you like to take it away Ooh. or is it alessio uh, oh. it, it was alessio but i can whoever that's no problem <laughs> I, I have not prepared any notes, but I can take it away, as uh, as Audrey could, because uh, Audrey was the one that uh, showed it to me. Well, uh, I we think we about... all could. Couldn't yeah, we? we are talking about uh, The Crew, which is uh, very much inspired by a country that is a different name for something that is very similar. Briscola. Uh, La yeah, pelote. Exactly. <laughs> so it's basically a cooperative game with a, a space setting, although the space setting doesn't really matter in my opinion, where every player is given a hand of card, card to a specific player. Uh, sometimes there's going to be some complications. So for example, giving uh, the first card, uh, the, giving them in a specific order or sometimes without any communication. Um, when they are allowed to communicate, the players can only command and say if it's the higher or the lower of a specific uh, suit. And then uh, on their turn, a player is going to announce a suit uh, by putting down a card and then other players are going to put a card of the same suit or uh, another suit if they, they don't have anything that matches and the player with the high, uh, highest card wins the hand. And that's, that's how it plays. I've had a lot of fun with it personally, but I feel like there could be a little bit more interesting communication to to make it more more responsive. It, it feels it, it feels like sometimes I'm just looking at my end, quickly having a look at the board, and then just putting my cards down. Um, and there's like a lot of uh, a lack of interactivity with the other player, the way I felt it. But uh, maybe the the higher levels are better. What's great is that it's easy to explain, easy to play, and your grandparent probably interactivity with the other player, the way I felt it. But uh, maybe the the higher levels are better. What's great is that it's easy to explain, easy to play, and your grandparent probably uh, already know the rules better than you. So my parents uh, played. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Audrey, uh, you can uh, you can probably uh, already know the rules better than you. So my parents uh, played <laughs> exactly. Uh, Audrey, uh, you can uh, you can say more about it because you played it a lot more than I did. Well, I played it just twice as much as you did because we we played a few missions together and I did one or two missions less uh, with my parents. Uh, yeah, with with my parents, we've always, uh, as long as I remember, we've always played the, the bullet, uh, which is the, the word in French, yes. and also with my grandmother. And so I knew that to introduce them to a and uh, can just be adapted. So that's where we had an issue with my uh, mom having troubles with the TTS controls because uh, there were conflicting keys and so every time she was trying to right click on her screen to rotate her camera, the camera was going left or right. But like not stopping, just going right. Uh, <laughs> TTS is fully scripted so you, you just put your card and click and it resolves and calculates everything so that was a bit easier. To do. The, the only thing that uh, is that I, in my opinion for people that are used to play well the, the bullet which is a two versus two uh, game uh, game it's better if you do maybe the first round while talking and then you say okay now we don't talk you can introduce the communication mechanisms as you play and just do the first round where everyone can talk a bit just to understand the, the game yeah actually uh, i have to say that uh, you have to say that uh, uh, this is a this is actually a trick taking game with uh, with the communication aspect we, which is very important because my main observation about the crew is that this is uh, your typical summer summer evening game you put the kids to sleep and start playing and play and play and play and you can get to daybreak playing because uh, a game a mission lasts uh, for five or seven minutes and uh, you can file fast or su succeed fast and 
the communication it's all that makes or breaks uh, basically there's a smart way of communicating because you put the card that you want to communicate uh, you show the card uh, to everyone else and you put your communication token on it in a position which would mean that uh, this is the highest card you have in your hand that th this is the lowest card you have in your hand or uh, since the missions vary in difficulty uh, this kind of communication is very important, especially when you should be the one making the taking the tricks, but uh, you cannot because you don't have uh, enough power in that suit to take the cards. So mm. uh, I, I play. Uh, I play this game uh, both in person because, uh, uh, like Alexis said, it is very similar to local European version of the game, Briscola or whatever, and uh, everyone knows how to play, and the grandparents uh, actually uh, play, it very, uh, play it very, very good. So uh, I played it in person and I played it on uh, Board Game Arena. And I have to say, if you play, this is the most unsuitable game to play online, especially taking turns, because... Uh, World uh, card a week. <laughs> yeah, be, 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 yeah be, be, being there in person or talking or in real time, actually, it doesn't, it, it makes a difference even if you are supposed to not be talking. Yeah, it, it's, um, this is something... I played with the, the folks and yeah, they, they jumped in very quickly with it. And I good if we weren't all sat around a table playing together. Although I would like to wind back and just address something. Alessio said you put the children to bed and then you play with your family. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of they're, course. they're excluded, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> no, actually, uh, I, I, have, I have to say the kids when I played were fast old. So yeah. actually they couldn't play. Because I when I play with my parents, I am the kid and I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I want to say for the record that uh, they, I love my kids uh, as if they were mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I also want to apologize to my wife for this joke. Yeah, yeah. You see, this is the fun thing about Alessio. If you give him a length of rope, sometimes he trips over it and then hangs himself. Yeah, of course. I do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I do not get to play the crew enough. I really don't. Um, we are night. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna be playing my city, and we're gonna be playing the century series. So we probably won't get to play crew. Um, but it was it was the biggest hit that we've introduced them to uh, the uh, the old folks to, along with tiny towns. It was a huge hit as well. But best game I'm never going to talk about on here. Yeah. I got the expansions for that recently, including the uh, little tree one. Yeah. For, for instance, uh, my my kids are playing Tiny Towns. Yeah. It's a it's a fun game. Um, I I do think the crew is uh, just fantastic. I don't know if I'm not sure if we have still haven't like played every single variation in the crew because there's so many of them, and so I don't know if the deep sea is going to offer enough difference even though i prefer the theme of deep sea exploration how do you guys feel about it searching for the lost continent of moo uh, anything gameplay wise yeah actually the the theme is really really weak uh, i think that the suits uh, just define the kind of thing illustrated like there's space training space walks and stuff like that scientific research but uh, the th the theme is so light uh, um I think and stuff like that, scientific research, but uh, the, th the theme is so light. Uh, um, I think I can uh, recap the crew in just the sentence. This is the most of putting game you will ever like, because uh, that's it. Uh, the, the game is unassuming. Most of putting game you will ever like, because... Uh, that's it. Uh, the, the game is unassuming, it, it has a weak theme, and uh, it is so simple that you wonder why should I have fun in playing this? Then you play it, then you get to the then you play it, then you get to the very crazy missions like uh, you have to make three 
three, three takes in order in different players and each player has to do and the player one has to do two has to take exactly two hands and the other has to take exactly four hands and so kick exactly four hands and so on and you actually are addicted to it you you will have just one more play and you will pass time uh, having fun uh, with, with everyone involved and it's very this is a great game that, yeah it's very strongly that one last game kind of thing and you're like mm, are we done now yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, one game is so fast yeah it is it is i i just i i there are apparently some tricks and surprises that um uh deep sea will have it's different the main thing i've seen at which is selling me on it is apparent if you lay out all of the cards for each suit it creates a little underwater like scene i don't know if <laughs> that either. um so i'm kind of wishing i didn't own <laughs> the 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 crew and had just waited for mission deep sea instead because I, I like this theme more but i don't know i don't think i'd want both you know, all the card of a suit playing a, she- a scene is actually uh, an, an idea. It's very old. Like, <laughs> it's a tri- okay. that's, a, that's a triptych, you know. A- and it's still one of the best to player game anyway. It's a very good game, yeah. Did we mention mm-hmm. that the crew won the expert game of the year at the Cannes uh, Online Awards? No, we, we did not. didn't. Now we did. D- so now it's done. We didn't. Now we did. So now it's done. Very deserved uh, winner. Yeah, I mean, uh, v- there was a big controversy again. It's in the French community about whether it's an expert game or not. And after having played it, I will say uh, it's uh, for me. It's not an expert. I will say uh, it's uh, for me. It's not an expert game, but it's not a family game. It's in that in between where you can play, you can introduce the people very easily in the first missions because it's easy. And some missions are worthy of, yes, being called expert missions, but some missions, some missions are not enough for me to say, yes, it's an expert game. I I still have, I still have to win a mission 43. Uh, we haven't even got anywhere near that. I haven't had enough time to, to play it. Yeah, we stopped at like mission 5 or 6. <laughs> oh, you lightweights. Uh, we at least... Yeah, we stopped at like mission 5 or 6. <laughs> we oh, you to, lightweights. Uh, we at least got to mission like 20 something before we stopped for the evening. Uh, after many circumstances of. Um, of my partner's father, like confidently playing a card, and everybody else around the table simultaneously no! face palm. Confidently playing a card, and everybody else around the table simultaneously no! face palming. <laughs> and and then he'd look at it going, "Oh no, I've been stupid again." <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, yeah, it is very. Uh, it's one of those things where you take they take a very simple um set of build something wonderful out of it. Um, and I think this uh, it this does what Hanabi was trying to do, but in a better fashion. Honestly, in, in my opinion, it's it's a game worth knowing, but it won't be an unforgettable game for me. Yeah, it's cool. Whatever. Fend strong arms their own topic in because um, I've actually been writing a review on this. I've played about fifty hours of this game over the past week, um, and that it, it's going to be re-released with a second Kickstarter next month, which is part of the reason I'm like, I'd like to talk about it now and do a review on it now, because this is cab game to actually get a release, which is um, a cooperative AI boss battler or boss battler, uh, Kingdom Death being the first one that ever got released. And this one is is the second. Um, For some people, I think it kind of snuck under the radar, uh, Partly because the theme is very generic fantasy, it feels a lot like feels a lot like the Descent Terranoff world in its art style. Mm. But anyway, it's a one to four player game. You take the role of seekers who are going around the wilds outside this um, gladiatorial city called Silverstream. Uh, it's Silverstream, but missing an R and missing an A, which is always fun when you're always fun when you're trying to write the name because um, you keep writing Silverstream and then you have to go back and Derpify it. Uh, you have um, you have multiple different ways to play it. There's a player versus player gladiatorial skirmish combat game like um, Warhammer uh, Underworlds. I haven't played that. Uh, it's not my jam. There's a there's a two campaigns. One which is a solo player prologue campaign. Um, 
that gradually builds up mechanics and teaches you the setting and everything uh, and that feeds into a cooperative multiplayer campaign um, which again feeds you more and more of the setting and has slightly harder and harder ga games and then after that I recommend you that's the order you play them in um, after that you've got the survival mode which is where you rock up everybody picks a seeker so you've got four of them um, or you have you have to have four no matter the number of players and you have to survive 10 seasons perhaps fighting the twin dragon at the end which is like the biggest the biggest creature in the setting at the moment um, this was a 2018 kickstarter uh, and it landed on my door like last like just a few couple of weeks ago um so reasonable turnaround um um it's interesting in that the character development is you have your basic that you've got a character you've got movement you've got health you move orthogonally um, but some characters can move diagonally which really changes their experience and one of them can even fly um um they have a health pool for their defenses. So if you reach zero health, you're downed and you're out of the fight. But there are revives and there's healing as well in the game. Um, and then the characters have like split magic um, and physical defenses. And some characters will fight physically, some will fight magically. So there's a division. So there's a division on that as well. But everything's sort of very much set in advance this isn't a complex game it's not a long game you're going to typically get a campaign done in three four weeks um the, the seekers do advance though they start out with two abilities um and those vary uh, depending uh, depending what they are fanny the very unfortunately named fanny who's a cat woman in case you're not sure fanny um is a body part in in the uk um a female body part so, okay. Most yeah, yeah. people know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why when Americans call their packs fanny packs, fanny packs, um, where the, the yes, the it's British, very unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Yeah. Whereas in the UK they would be called bum bags, which is still kind of unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Um, is it much better? It's not really. No, it's all silly. Um, uh, uh, before anyway, you continue, I on. just had a uh, one quick question. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the game is uh, minions and, and other yeah. um, enemies on, on it. Yeah, it's um, it has a single set arena, so you, you're not really moving from one location to another once you start the fight. So it's got that same showdown, they call it an encounter. But yeah, there's usually multiple foes. Um, and uh, I was going to, the buildings in your uh, encampment, which is like for Kingdom Death players, your settlement. It has five buildings. As you level them up, the characters will unlock other abilities, and it varies for each character as to which building they need upgraded to what level. The buildings get stronger as well. You've got a little bit of light crafting sprinkled in there, graded to what level. The buildings get stronger as well. You've got a little bit of light crafting sprinkled in there, um, which is tied to the workshop location, and also... Uh, tied to workers who are like you can have three workers they're cards they're like someone who lives in your camp and does stuff for you and they give you like a, a set ability and sometimes they're tied to workers who are like you can have three workers they're cards they're like someone who lives in your camp and does stuff for you and they give you like a, a set ability and sometimes they give you an extra craftable item so there's light crafting if you kill creatures you can get resources or you can capture them, get gold, gold, you trade it in to upgrade buildings. Resources or you can capture them, get gold, gold, you trade it in to upgrade buildings. Um, now the encounter, as uh, Alexis was asking, is indeed like f many versus many. Uh, the creatures all have a set number of instinct cards, AI cards, and they're shoveled into a big pile together. So four separate monsters. Um, but when you drew a card each turn, one of them would act, but not necessarily all the parts. Um, mm. Kind every of creature... smog singers. Yes, it's kind of like what they're talking about we... doing with the smog singers and everything. <laughs> they're not out yet, so it's hard to... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the, the idea of multiple things being find express personality. They have like five cards, um, and you'll get used to them. Some of them, like the Wisp and the Exalted, are support healers. So you're like, well, we need to eliminate those as fast as possible. Um, others, uh, uh, there's some summoners that like are problematic because they flood a load of little tiny guys on the board as well. Would you say uh, that you crowded? 
no, no. Uh, the most number of creatures you're facing is five, um, and then maybe some summons. And the characters, you, there are a fair few that have like AOE sweeping abilities that are very good at mopping up the summons. Um, also, because you have uh, some choice choice where you're going to fight, you do like a scouting phase and you draw a number of different um, location cards, which will tell you roughly what's going to be on there, at least like one creature you so get you to tailor this ahead. a bit yeah you, you mm. it, amazingly this scouting phase like which is literally just spend two actions for two seekers so two seekers so four actions total go scout draw some cards pick one that it feels better, like a better than the, it's a yeah. better hunt phase yeah it's really <laughs> you, you're making like you look at each location each one has a modifier and you're like oh crikey so the monsters are more dangerous and deal more damage here but over here we take one damage at the start of every one of our activations because we're burning and on fire we're burning and on fire Oof. and this one just has this thing that we don't want to fight because we just fought it and it was a pain in the butt for us so yeah, it's um it, it's it's interesting very good yeah and and essentially uh, for me this game is is like a must-have for people who enjoy uh, cooperative versus intelligent foes, card foes, card-based AI foes, you know, cab games, because it's like slightly heavier than Townsfolk Tussle. Um, it's this uh, middle ground that's really longer. missing at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it, it is. It's, we've got up at the top end, we've got like uh, Aeon Trespass, and we've got San Kukushin, and of course we have the already released Kingdom Death. Released Kingdom Death. And every single one of those is looking to be something you invest multiple months in playing, which is fine and great. Um, and Townswick Tussle is like, maybe you could play it in a, week, in, a, in a weekend, like maybe one or two sessions and you're done. It's only four fights. This is yeah. like 10 fights and it occupies that nice space in the middle the middle it's also pretty light it's like townsfolk tussle in that the creatures have just health points so you don't worry about hit locations or anything fancy like that you just deal damage to them and the, their health drops and i really like the battle system which um i didn't get much of a chance to go into uh but briefly you have a base damage. you have a base damage which is when you attack you always deal this much damage and then you have dice uh, that you will roll and that gives every character an interesting feel because one character, Varaclea, Varaclea, she has five base damage and zero dice. So you know exactly how much damage she's going to deal every time. Um, but, but that means she doesn't trigger any special abilities or anything funky. And in contrast to that, Lestrida, um, who is the most broken character in the game, she, I, I'm going to have to speak to Lazy Squire about her. Um, <laughs> but she rolls a ton of dice and has a very low base damage. So she's ideal for somebody who's like, I want to chuck dice and really have that exciting, what that exciting, what's going to happen kind of experience. Um, so there's a seeker for almost everyone. If you want to play a tank, they're there. If you want to play um, mages, archers, uh, healers, self healers, everything. I, I found almost none of the characters are worse than any of the others everything's very nicely balanced there's some balance there's some super cool characters matsu um she plays like a uh, wolverine so she can't be easily healed by other people but she has masses of self-healing um so okay. yeah I, I i just i've had a great time now all of that said i gotta get onto the caveats before i answer any before i answer any questions you might have first of all models are really small but they were cast in red, resin by Archon. Those are being changed for the Kickstarter. They're bigger. And that was would have been one of my complaints, is they need to be bigger. They will be much bigger. Um, sculpts, though, are great. The rule book is ass. Like, like it's terrible. Um, not How... the worst rule book I've ever used. It's functional, but it's just a lot of mistakes and missed things. It's okay. worse than Robinson Crusoe. Uh, how would you say that the um, sometimes like uh, how the, um, sometimes like uh, how hard are the rules like is it uh is it a complicated game to to learn and play is, is no. the is a bad rule book something that's going to be really the, the the bad rule book is just like irrelevant when you okay. get down to it, the mechanics of the game and the underlying stuff. Down to it, the mechanics of the game and the underlying stuff is solid and easy to understand. It's just kind of badly laid out. Some things are not well uh, covered. Sometimes the text refers to the wrong thing. 
like the very first encounter in the solo campaign, I spent half an hour looking for creatures that didn't exist, comb through the rule book, and tighten it all up. Um, yeah. It, it, that, it, the, that the actual really... game. That, that would be really unprofessional for a big board game with, uh, you know, uh, cab da- style battles to have mislabeled cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shade. Buy to the rule book. The, the game is everything about the game. I, I played it and I struggled with the rule book. Right. And it took me a while to get into it. But once I did and I was like, I see the flow of the game, I was like, this is just fun. The, it sounds really the, the, fun. These different characters, the way they all unlock, the fact that you can just play like three characters and see how they fit together. I, I um, in one particular thing, I had Zaxos, who's like kind of the lead character. He's sort of a tank, but he has a resurrection ability. Um, and I had, um, I, I said a name earlier, if I get right, Lestida. Um, now Lestida has a her ultimate ability, like right at the like right at the end, is uh, if she dies, she deals ten damage to the thing that attacked her. Um, and Zaxos can, for three health, resurrect an ally back up at ten health. So I basically had this situation where Lestida would just run at things and slaughter them and and not worry about her health. And when she fell over, she'd basically kill something, and, and then Zaxos would pick her back up into the fight immediately. It's just like fastball special get in there don't worry about it um and that's just one thing like vara cleaver i really enjoyed because she has summons so she she's a bit of a pet um character mm, uh, mm. uh and also um before we finish felt was really a lot of fun he is um the squire of one of the npcs that you battle at one point during the game and he is utterly useless and lazy in that when it comes to the encampment phase, he sleeps most of it away. So he's useless. So he's useless for all of the things you're supposed to be doing during encampment. But he always fully heals between every single fight. And he does like um, a lot of taunting and but takes hits for other people and everything. So yeah, I was like a really sweet kind of unusual way of tanking in that he just he doesn't really taunt or draw attention. He stands next. To, he stands next to someone who needs the protection and just dives in the way. Uh, it's it, it, really good. I, I'm. I think I might call it like a nine out of ten game. I don't rate games ten out of ten. Um, I am absolutely going to back the second Kickstarter, and I think I might just fully back everything because I want the bigger models. I want the full revised rule. Full revised rule book. I want the updated experience. I'm okay. gonna. I'm going to shoot them a link to my written review when it comes out because there's a. I, I hope they look at the problems I have with the game, and make sure they're addressed. Um, it certainly seems like they are aware of the the issues and they were open to feedback from the community during their um, during their um, during their their first time round. They did open like beta t- play testing with people. So Did you look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is this is a franchise that I. Uh, d- I think it's great, and for people who played Descent or Sword and Sorcery, who want that step into, uh, I want a smarter AI opponent. But along with Townsfolk Tussle, this is, uh, you know, of the of the Kickstarters that have released these uh, within this genre. These are my two like top two because of how different and how light they are. And that's all respect to um, Aeon Trespass, which I I really love as well. But these two, ooh. I need to, to have a look at those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, on Game Founders the preview page of the new campaign. You, yep. ca- you can start following it uh, with a follow mechanism in Game Founder. They usually add bonuses. Um, yep. You can just have a look there. Yeah, if you follow and then fo- pledge afterwards, you will get a, um, a free model. It's some guy riding a dinosaur. Um, yeah, he's not, he's, he's not in the the game I have, so he's new. It's but, not yeah. just a dinosaur; it's a golden axe dinosaur. Oh, oh! I didn't, I didn't catch that. <laughs> it's it's like the go, the, the, the go, you got in gold, you got to the mount to mount in golden axe. Oh yes, it's like a triceratops, but it's got tiny front legs. Yeah, he's a, yeah. <laughs> he's like a some kind of bird guy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's called Wild Ascent Lavon Rising. You should be able to find it. Maybe we'll put a link in the description um, for this podcast. It should at least like go and follow it um, for sure, and then decide if you want to pledge or not. But I can tell you, I'm going to be like, I, I'm, I'm in. 
I, I love, really, really love this, and I want the bigger models. Um, but they are days, way bigger. 19 mm. days from publication of a podcast? Another podcast? No, 19 days when we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> so, from, from uh, the big it, it, it's, the, it's the end of this month, the end of June, it will be launching. Okay. All right. So, it's 19 days since uh, we lost David to the flood. Yeah, David, <laughs> David got flooded away, yes. Yeah. 19 days since uh, we lost David to the flood. Yeah, David, <laughs> David got flooded away, yes. yes Can we call Master Chief to fight the flood? Oof, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super excited because uh, when you get on there, you'll be able to have a look. Yeah. I'm I'm super excited because uh, when you get on there, you'll be able to have a look. That I uh, put it in our chat. There's this thing um, which I don't have. It's a new creature. It's massive. Like they've they've said it's going to be. Um, oh, they had a scale on there for it. Oh, they had a scale on there for it. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, it did. That thing is going to be uh, 120 millimeters tall, which is like wee. That's a pretty good uh, good size for a game that's just launching. That sounds, that sounds the, nice. the yeah. Um, I mean, I gotta say as well, the, nice. the yeah. Um, I mean, I gotta say as well. Uh, they they did a small, responsible, sensible sized um, uh, Kickstarter. It was only three boxes when it arrived. It was two campaigns and the. PvP mode and the PvE mode, and I thought, you know what, they turned this around nothing. This is just, I know it's got uh, Lavon Rising's a bit of a weird name, and some people have complained about that, but heck, the dwarf is called Berlin, so, you know. That's a good name for a dwarf. It is. It's it's spelt uh, Beryl Lin, but yeah, it's Berlin. So. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop gushing about it because we're getting close to time. How long uh, a session? How long an uh, encounter? Uh, you can do an entire encounter cycle, with, so encampment scout encounter within about um, an hour and a half to an hour, um, depending on how long, much discussion you want to do. It's fast flowing. Set up, tear down. Um, pretty fast. The the organization within the box is phenomenal. It's got foam trays for everything. It's got proper good trays for all the local pieces. Uh, so literally your characters, you just pull them out and they're ready to go. Um, from single board so yeah it's i think i could be set up within 20 minutes base um quite small if you alternate the um like you, you don't have the encounter board and the encampment board out at the same time but even with both of them on there you're talking about the size of kingdom death with everything out okay i'm done okay so, right. well, that's all we have time for this episode. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash The Last Standee or as The Last Standee on Twitter. And until next time, it's goodbye from Alexis. From Belgium. Au revoir. Alessio. Ciao. Bye bye. Myself and David, if he could manage to withstand the flood and tide and wasn't lost on a boat somewhere, uh, would also be saying goodbye. And remember that the second E in Stan D is for Igris. We'll miss you, David. <laughs> we'll catch you up.